Hey there YouTube, AJ here. And I was uh, getting ready to do my uh, weekend chores. Uh, I gotta mow the yard and all that crap. Don't wanna do that, so I'm finding a reason to put it off. Anyway, um, I was at the Charlotte Auto Fair Friday. I did buy a couple little things. I got, I also got two uh, front tires for my 15 inch rims. That got me thinking, I wanna get my, start getting those wheels cleaned up so I can paint them, get them painted so I can get these tires mounted. And um, I was watching a video for Make It Custom. I can't remember that guy's name. He's up in Canada. But uh, he was putting um, tires on the rims for his wife's Cadillac. They have a tire changing machine. They were using the, the rotation table and the tire changing ch machine with a wire brush and stuff to clean the wheels. I thought, man, that'd be nice. That'd save you a lot of work. You could have the rim rotating one way and you know brushing the other or using a grinder with a wire wheel on it and I was like I, I need something like that so I sat there thinking it's like well I guess first thing I need is a motor and I was like what do I have like in scrounge like obviously I'm cheap I don't want to go out and buy this stuff got the thinking is like I do have something all right so up in the attic I remembered I have this old ceiling fan. Now, it's a pretty good ceiling fan, but uh, the remote control module went out on it and can't turn the lights on and off anymore. But the fan motor works fine. So I got to thinking about, can I make this work? Well, I'm gonna find out. All right, so the first thing we need to do is start stripping this thing down, getting rid of all the crap we don't need. Let's get rid of these light bulbs before I break them. We don't need them. No need to have to clean up broken glass, and that seems like something I would do. Yeah, that's going to be an issue that sits proud of the surface that I wanted to mount, but we can take care of that. We'll cap off all these wires later so we don't have open sockets. Let's uh, get rid of these blades. That's actually encouraging. That's about perfect. So what I'm looking at is this whole thing rotates. And I want to make a platform on top of this that spins. I want this platform to be it's got to be at least big enough for a 16 inch wheel. So like I'm thinking 18 inches, which from this outer bracket to out here, it looks like it's about 18 inches, which is almost perfect. But these brackets, one, I'm wondering, flip this over, will this be about the right height? If I can flip it over. This might work, however, I'm going to need to grind away these bumps to allow this to go in all the way. When you turn it this way, it goes over those bumps and won't, will go into the where it meets the holes, but when you turn it this way, it won't quite go in. But it does look like... Gonna be really close to the height I need to support it. And, you know, maybe I need to put a spacer under my platform. But I'm thinking that's gonna work. So we'll remove the rest of these arms. 
and then uh, yeah I was just noticing this band comes off too and I was wondering if I wanted to put it straight onto this instead but then that won't give me outer support I think if I use these arms that'll give me outer support onto the table and make it a lot sturdier or I could do what I was originally going to do just had an idea it might be possible to flip this entire piece let's try that I might not really use bolts out here I might just attach it in here what are these So these arms right here have a uh, slope to them. It's not a flat surface, and that's for the to cant the blade of the fan. It's just that part that is above this surface. So it looks like if I grind these flat, I will have a flat surface to mount this. And instead of having to do all this work in here. All I really have to do is take this and flip it over and I got a good sturdy platform to work from. I think that's where we're going. Thinking maybe I cut the thing with a hole in the middle that this actually goes through the hole to screw it down to and hold it against this and then I can run screws into the wood to make it rotate. So this is a possibility, we'll keep, we'll keep this open for now. Our next step is to make the flat surface, which means I gotta grind all these flat. So I got those all leveled off. About halfway through the process I realized I could have just taken the platform, the wood disc I'm going to put on top of this and put little divots where these ride. They would have acted like teeth to hold it in there. Good thought. Too late. Oh well. So yeah, next part of this, I'm going to need to make a, I don't know, 18 inch or so disc maybe a little more than that just to give it a little more room thought maybe I might want to make it big enough for motorcycle rims too so maybe I'll make it a 20 inch circle let's so uh, if I do 20 inches I'd just stick out a little bit past that so that'll probably work pretty well all right so I have this piece of uh, really nice plywood I was trying to save it because I was going to use it to make a desk, but it's a little over 22 wide. I think I still have enough Ooh. to use it, but All right. it's going to get sacrificed. I'm going to need a marking device. That's all going to work out. We'll see. Okay. I got to do a couple things. Got to make this round. Got to make a hole for this to go in the center. Because. Ow. So after test fitting this, laying this on there, it's going to be just about perfect. Like that. So I'll be able to put this on, tighten it down, 
run three screws in it. I think we're going to go that route. We're going to try this, use this as the hub. Then the other thing I realized was I don't really need to make a base for this because I'm not going to really want to work on it on the ground anyway. If I use my workmate here, I can just open the jaws up just a smidge, clamp this in, done, cord hangs out below, plug it in, there we go, Bob's your uncle. So yeah, I think that's the way we're going to go. So next steps, we need to make this round and put a hole in it. Let's start by putting a hole in the middle of this. I still need to make a circle on this. So instead of using a string, I'm going to use this little scrap of thin wood, make a circle gauge, or circle guide, I guess, I don't know. Something a little easier than uh, keeps the distance the same. <laughs> Mark this where it's at on this edge. We're gonna go to the shortest edge. That's pretty much the same. Pretty much the same. Look at that. I actually cut this pretty darn square. We drill a hole here. And we have a circle. Now I'm gonna need to make the inner one as well since I'm here. Alright, so we want the inner circle to be the diameter this let's see what happens whoa <laughs> that's a big hole you know what I forgot to do I measured the diameter Got divide divide by two to get the radius. So now we got a bullseye. Ignore this line. We're not going to cut on that one. We're going to cut on this one to get our outside diameter. And then we're gonna cut this one. So this will drop through there. So it's more or less round. When you're using a circular saw, you can't really cut tight radiuses with circular saw. You only go in so far in the blade bind, so you could just go straight out, cut it, and redo it. It's just a lot of faster. I didn't really want to get out my jigsaw and go all the way around the outside of this. It takes forever. But I will have to use my jigsaw on this. First thing we do is drill a pilot hole so we can get the blade in. See, that's a pretty snug fit so this is pretty tight I think it's gonna do really most of the holding 
But I'm going to drill a couple small pilot holes in these three holes here. Put in three small screws. find one and it's got a switch in it and everything problem is do I have the remote for this still to turn on the fan huh. all right hang on gotta find the cord first all right not only did I find the cord I was looking for but found the remote as well while looking for it sweet Still leaking. All right, gotta take a time out. Go stop the leaking. All right, got the hole stopped up. Back to this. I don't have any small wire nuts, so. I use for cars and motorcycles, I guess. I don't like using these for this. So these little guys are heat shrink and solder together. You uh, stick your cord, your wires in there, use the heat gun, and it melts the solder, shrinks it all in one shot. There we go. One side. See if I can do this without burning myself. Oh. Alright, the nice thing about these connectors is the heat shrink and everything is supposed to seal them up tight. Now I still go over it with tape and everything to create a stronger bond. I don't like cords that are pulled, that have the ability to be pulled apart. So we'll do that here. Are you like me? Can you never find your own tape? <laughs> little plastic loop. Oh, perfect. That's a little scrap piece here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run it down there to there. That's okay. Eventually I'll come back in and I'll cap these somehow. But for now I'm just going to put some uh, tape over the socket openings. Remind me not to stick my finger in there, you know. Quite honestly, this will probably become the permanent solution. I probably will never go back and do that. I don't know, maybe I will. measure here just so I don't get myself a little zippity zappity well the battery died while I was looking for my skirt so I went ahead and tightened everything down and uh, I screwed up it's confession time the uh, hub here that I wanted to that I was going to attach this to. After I screwed it down, I couldn't get this thing to turn. I was confused. 
turns out, the problem is that hub doesn't turn with the rest of the fan. So now I gotta rethink how I'm gonna attach this to this outside thing. I mean, I can do it. There's holes all through it. It's just gonna be a little harder to get them in there. Get, get them lined up, but I can do it. Meanwhile, let's test the electrics. Let me see if I got this thing where motor works. Oh, something's happening. All right. Well, the motor works, we know that. Let's uh, turn it off. Well, that's not off. Keep it on high. Oh man. Well, either the battery's dead, which very well can, can be. I mean, this thing is over two years old. I'm guessing I need a new battery. And of course, it's some funky little goofy one. I think what I can do is go ahead and mount this to this, mark all my points around it. That way, it'll make it easier to center this when I, because I'm gonna have to take this off to mount to this. So let's go ahead and do that. know this is center still got to get a battery maybe I can find one in another remote test it I don't know but meantime <laughs> So I got that pattern drawn out here so I can put it on there upside down. I have to take this off of here. So as you can see now, just gonna take and kind of line this up like so. Get it really close. And then figure out how I'm gonna attach that to the wood. All right, so that'll get work. But these are too long. Look at these inch and five eighths. Let's see if I have anything shorter. Got some inch and a quarter drywall screws. All right, that should work. Although they're gonna to be too long too. So all right, I can grind off the tops. So you can see they stuck through on this side, so they're just a smidge too long. Not a big deal though. That's why I have lots of safety glasses. If I only had one pair, I'd never find them. Okay, were any of you telling me they were up here? Jeez. All right, so that's smooth again. I cannot put my thing back in there because I need to access to these holes in here to mount it again. All right, 
She spins. All right, so we gotta definitely be able to kick this thing up in high gear. So I think the first thing I need to try to do is find a battery for this remote. Yeah, this end, the end of this looks a little corroded, so I think his battery's gone. All right, found a battery and another ceiling fan remote. So obviously it's not perfectly round, centered, whatever, because the uh, center hole is a little wobbly. It's not horrible, but it's also not perfect. It is not as powerful as I hoped on high speed. That's the bummer. I mean, honestly, I don't even know if it's going to be able to spin the weight of the rim. But that may all be for naught if it won't even spin the rim and allow me to work on it while it's spinning and keep spinning you know what I mean so here's one of the wheels in question obviously you know it needs a lot of work and I was thinking if I could just like kind of hold sandpaper against to clean it up while it's spun it might make life easier I don't know I'm wishing I had made concentric circles on this like to allow me to center things up easier because that's going to be a pain it's way off center it's moving though Whew. maybe it'll work better than i thought where's that sandpaper it's actually working better than i thought the chips are flying all right, I'm actually pleasantly surprised. I need to do a better job getting it centered, but man. Hold on, let's stop this for a second. Let's look at something. It cleaned up the inner part of the wheel very nicely. The beads are nice and smooth. Actually, a little more work, that'll be really close. I'm, I'm that really happy with that. Now, it didn't strip the paint completely away, but you can see like it, where it was, it was starting to get down here. It's almost a bare metal in that spot. It's definitely, you see how much dirtier it was in here. It's definitely working and it's working better than I expected. At first, I thought my tests were not going to go well. When I saw how slow it was going in, when I was trying to round it up, it was like seeming like it wasn't going to keep working. Like it wasn't going to have enough oomph to keep the thing spinning while I worked on it. I am now optimistic. I think it might actually, let's take a look at this. Okay, so we see this inner bead here. We see it's all pretty dirty and rusty, so let's uh, take a little quick spin with it. I think I have the beginnings of something here. Whoa, that was close. Let's take a look. Hey, let's face it. Obviously sandblasting would be easier, but I really didn't work on it that long. I got a lot of that cleaned up already. Yeah, that's not bad at all for that little bit of work and effort. And like I said, the inner bead, the inner part of the wheel looks really good. This is slowly getting there. So am I ready to call this project a complete success? I'm not sure yet. In the end, this isn't exactly what I envisioned because you know, holding the wire brush against it, you know, it does clean it up and clean the dirt off and it takes the loose stuff off pretty quick. But to get down to bare metal, it's gonna take some more. And I did envision something more to this, so.
Let's try that. That's more like it. Look at that. Most of that dirt and stuff's out of there. A lot of this is already down to bare metal. Cleaned up on this real quick. Real happy with that. Now, we're gonna take a crack at this. All right, let's let it get up to speed and we'll see how this goes. Am I ready to call this little project here a success? Honestly, I think I am. I'm pretty pleased. I did figure out as I was doing that, that by the if I use the rotation of the grinder, I can speed it up and slow it down. And uh, I don't know how that will affect the life of the fan long term, but uh, it definitely made working on this possible. And um, I think it's definitely going to cut down the amount of time I have to work on these wheels. Because, take a look at this. There's a lot of paint removed down to bare metal now. So, I mean, I got a ways to go. You can see it's taking out major chunks of it. It's taking it off. This was very thick, multiple coats of paint. And, um, it is working, and it's working pretty darn good, actually. Um, the back is getting much is much cleaner than it was, and down to bare metal. I've, I've removed not only dirt and rust and paint. So, yeah, I'm uh, actually pretty, whoa, that was almost bad. So yeah, I'm actually uh, pretty pleased. This seems to be a, useful tool for my garage. I'm going to be continuing to strip these wheels, get them painted so I can get my new tires mounted. For now, we're gonna call it good for this project and uh, we got a new tool to use. I think it's gonna help me out a lot. So try to get this hot rod on the road sooner or later. Later YouTube.